Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Hi, my name is Arshil Ahi. And first of all, I want to say uh, thank you very much for being with me this evening. It's Sunday evening. I appreciate there's many places that you could be. There's many things that you could be doing, but you decide to spend your time with me this evening. So I just want to say a big thank you. So what we're going to be discussing tonight is very simply how we're dealing with vendors and estate agents to find deals. Now, for those that know a little bit about me, is that I'm quite a prolific deal sourcer, a deal trader. Now, let's get a couple of things out of the way to start with. What is a deal sourcer? What is a deal trader? They are both pretty much the same thing. So you source deals or you package deals. So you've got deal sourcer, deal trader, deal packager. They all all the same thing. We pretty much are looking for the same thing. We're trying to find a deal. We're kind of trying to put it in a package where everyone understands it and we either sell it or we keep it for ourselves. So we'll go through what the roles of a, a deal source, a deal packager does. So we're talking about how we can find the best deals by speaking to the people that we need to. So whether that's the owner or the agent. So we've got a lot to cover. So let's get moving on. If you're watching us on the webinar, just give us a quick hello, just to let me know that you can hear me nice and uh, clearly. So Harry says, bring on the knowledge. Fantastic. Uh, Christos said, okay, oh, we've got Christos online as well, so brilliant. So everyone started to log in and say hello, which is fantastic. If you're watching on the uh, on Facebook, feel free to just give us a quick hello, that'd be great. So like I said, thank you very much for trusting me with your time, and I'll make sure that we'll provide you with so much content to make this worth your while. So by the end of the session, what I'm hoping that I'm going to be able to get you to is how you can get started in property with no money and experience. And I'm going to give, be giving you examples of that as well. I'm also going to be showing you how to make cash flow from simply controlling properties. And finally, I'm going to be showing you how to find vendors direct and negotiate the best deals. So if you like the thought of that and you, if you think you're in the right place, give me a quick hello. Uh, give me a quick yes, I'm definitely in the right place. We're going to be talking in a second. Uh, we're going to be talking in a second about our reasons why, and so I want you to start thinking about that. So start thinking about your reasons why, and don't let's try and uh, think slightly outside the box. Now, when we talk about the reason why, people straight away go, "I want to hit financial freedom." Now, financial freedom um, can come in so many different ways. Now, I want you to elaborate on that. What does financial freedom mean to you? So jot it down. Don't mention it yet because we're not at that point yet, but start to think about what does financial freedom mean to you? Does it mean that you, you're going to be able to provide for your family? Does it mean that you're going to be able to leave that job that you're currently in? Does it mean that you're going to have a certain amount of property? Does it mean that you're going to source a certain amount of properties? Does it mean that you're going to, um, you're going to go on a certain amount of holidays? Does it mean that you're going to hit a certain amount of cash flow? Does it mean that you want to try and create a legacy for your family? Now, these are all kind of the common answers that we kind of get on these kind of sessions. So I want you to delve slightly deeper into that this evening because I want to try and get an indication as to who we are, where we are. But before we do that, I want to understand a little bit about who we've got watching these sessions. So if you can jot just below who you are. So let's just say for argument say at the moment on Instagram, we've got Bobby Wasler. Hi, Bobby. Hope you're well. Uh, Bobby, if you can just stand uh, down below, just comment. So Bobby, uh, completely, so he might say completely new to property. I want to know a little bit about who you are. So, what's your experience in property? Are you completely new? Are you have you already got started? Are you out of the blocks, or are you a completely, you know, a, a trained, seasoned investor? And believe it or not, the strategy that we're going to be talking about tonight actually suits pretty much everyone. So, uh, so if you can, if you can. Um, if you can jot that down below, it gives us an indication. So I pretty much know then who who we need to speak to and in what context. So if we've got a load of property, if we've got a load of um, property experts on here, there's no point in talking about the beginning. Let's go straight into the deep end. So a great question that's coming from Mr. Malik on Instagram. He goes, what implications will Ali, uh, Brexit have on the property market and that's a fantastic question that's coming from Ali. So just so you know, I've, I've pointed to my left <laughs> because I've actually got my wife sat here with me. So that's Shireen. We're going to be talking about Shireen shortly. So that's why she's been roped into it. So uh, Ali, thank you, very much, uh, thank you very much for that question. I'm actually going to be talking about that shortly. 
So why should you listen to me? Why should you spend your Sunday evening listening to, to me? So first and foremost, I believe that if you want to know something about a certain topic, you go and find the best person in that field and ask them as many questions as you can or actually get involved with that person as much as you can. Now, it's a big claim. I appreciate that. But I believe I'm the best person in the United Kingdom to understand about deal trading. So I, you know, I'm a founder of the UK's first property investment marketplace mobile application. What that basically means is that I own a property investment app. Now, if you if you don't know already, so the property investor app was launched in April 2019 with the vision of becoming the UK's first property investment app, which showcases the best deals around the UK. We haven't gone outside the UK yet. And since launching, we've had over 10,000 people download the app and it's found that it's been a phenomenal source, not only to find deals, but also sell their deals as well. Now, if you haven't heard of this, one thing I would say is if you're using a mobile phone and it's a smart mobile phone, you go to the app store and you type in property investor, you're going to come up with a little blue house with a key in the middle. That's the app. Download it. It takes approximately two minutes to get yourself registered. And instantly within the palm of your hand, you're going to see approximately 200 below market value lease option rent to rent development opportunities in the palm of your hand and this has never been done before yes there's lots of websites out there but we're the founder well i'm the founder of the uk's first property investment uh, marketplace mobile application so that's why i believe i'm the best person to be able to uh, pitch this to you this evening now second well when i say second of all this was actually how i first started out I'd say that first and foremost, I'm a property investor. When I say that, I'm still buying property. I'm still, uh, well, I own uh, quite a number of properties. I also own a group of letting agencies. So I understand property. I understand property investors. I understand properties. I also understand tenants. So I've got, you know, I've got very good understanding as to what we should be looking for to sell as a deal. Now, last year, just to give you a bit of background, we sold 510 deals. And we'll be talking about that shortly. Furthermore, I'm an author of, uh, sorry, not an author, I'm a feature writer in two very well-known property investor magazines, uh, such as Your Property Network magazine and also the HMO magazine. I've been doing that for nearly five years uh, on a month-by-month -month basis. We write about different topics, so sometimes it may be HMO, sometimes it may be rent to rent, sometimes it may be development, maybe uh, something as simple as buy to let. So, you know, if you like the thought of that and you want to, get to know more about property publications, go to Your Property Network or the HMO Magazine websites. And then finally, I'm a Amazon bestseller of a book called Boom, Bust and Back Again. Now, as the title suggests, I've, it's property's never always been an easy journey for me. So I've seen the good times in the boom. I've seen some very bad times in the bust, almost on the brink of uh, declaring bankrupt. And then I'm back again to tell the tale. So if you haven't already done so, please feel free to go to Amazon, type in Boom Bust and Back Again, and feel free to you know, purchase the book if that's what you'd like to do. And then finally, I'm a property trainer. I've helped hundreds of people achieve financial freedom. So that's enough, that's a little bit about me. So talking about our goals, talking about our goals, why? So going back to this question, why? Why do you wanna get involved in property? What's brought you here this evening? So uh, I'm going to go to some of the questions uh, that have come up on the that have come up on the webinar. Uh, so I'm going to quickly have a quick look. So what is your reason why? So some people say I want to become uh, a better property investor. Now that's great. You know, it's all about understanding the marketplace, all about understanding what you do, how you do. So uh, let's just have a quick look at some of the other reasons why. So lots of people say that they're starting out. Um, so some people said that they want to build a better future. Some people said that they want to get to five thousand pounds a month cash flow. Some people saying three thousand pounds a month cash flow. Um, so so uh, let's just have a quick look. Some people want to be able to afford more holidays. Some people want to spend more time with their family, and that's a phenomenal reason because finan one part of financial freedom is being able to do things when you want with who you want. And we sometimes forget that. We take that for granted. So by becoming financial freedom, we actually have the power and the ability to do what we want, 
where we want and with who we want. So whether that we go on holidays, whether we actually just stay at home and spend time with our kids. Now, my wife's a great advocate for, for that. And she'll talk about that hopefully shortly. She's a, uh, we've got two very young children and we spend so much time and dedicating our time to them. So for me, having that time to be able to go to the swimming clubs, go to the assemblies, go to some of the shows, go to take her picking up from dance classes, picking her up from piano lessons, et cetera, et cetera. These are really important things for me. And this is what property has allowed me to do. It's brought me back my time. So I choose what I do, where I go and with who. So quickly going through. So goal number one. Okay, so brilliant. So reason, I want to source properties for myself and earn a regular income to have more choice to spend time with my family and friends. And that's a fantastic goal. So some of the goals, please, uh, some of the goals could be that you want to build cash flow. Some of the goals could be that you're looking to build an asset class. Some of the goals could be that you're looking to secure your family's future. You want to escape the rat race. You want to make property pay for some luxuries such as holidays, etc. You want to help your kids get onto the property ladder. You want to help your kids get through university. You just want to help your kids full stop. Or you want to create a pension plan. Now, how do you visualize success? Now, I, wrote, I read a book recently. I like, I'm, I'm not going to say that I'm the best reader because I'm not. Sometimes I, I get a bit fidgety and I can't sit and I don't have the attention span to sit there and read a book. But I read a book whilst I was on holiday recently and it says, it talks about goals and it talked about the big goal and it talked about a succession of goals. So the big goal was the big house or the big thing that you visualize that you want to do or where you want to be in the future. And what are you going to do to get there? So the book that I was reading, this guy wanted to retire in a mansion. And the mansion would have been, he, he actually had it down to T. He knew exactly what it looked like. He knew what the driveway was going to look like. He knew how much the property was going to be worth. And I thought that was quite powerful because I never really thought that far ahead. I thought, I know that I've got goals. I've, <clears throat> I've got goals for one year, three years, five years. And I pretty much stopped after five years because I thought, well, let's get to the five years. And this guy made me start thinking, well, maybe my goals need to be start looking at 10 years, 20 years, or a little bit further down the line starting. Um, so you've got to kind of understand and visualize what does success mean to you? Is it owning a certain amount of properties? Is it having the properties generate a certain amount of cash flow? Or is it source a certain amount of deals? But my question to you is very simple. It's all great having goals, but have you kind of ascertained how you're going to get there? What are you going to do to get there? So let's get straight into it. Tonight we're talking about deal sourcing. And we'll start from the beginning, just having a quick look because there's lots, uh, there's, we've got lots of uh, beginners on the, on the line and that, that, there's nothing wrong with that by the way. You know, I actually like it when we start from scratch because if I can uh, teach someone from a blank canvas, it means that I'm gonna make sure that you guys are gonna get it right from day one. So what is deal, uh, what is deal trading? What is deal sourcing? What is deal packaging? First of all, it's the same thing. The way that I see it is right, we're like a matchmaking service. So it's a service that we provide to homeowners where we match, we're matching investors to properties which homeowners have failed to sell. We're also offering a service to investors, helping investors find properties which they would not have found without your help. Therefore, you're generating a fee for your work, and your time and your effort. Finally, we're creating real win-win scenarios for everyone involved. So the vendor wins because they've sold the property. The investor wins because they've just bought a phenomenal investment property that they've been looking for. And finally, you win because you made a fee for that, for that service that you provided. Now, if we were to look at this as an existing, now just so you know, I'm not a rocket scientist. What we're talking about tonight is not something that I've, I've um, thought about, believe it or not. This is a service that estate agents created many, many years ago. So all we're doing is we're becoming a glorified estate agent, if that's what you want to do, and putting it in extremely simple terms. Now, going back to 2019, I actually sourced 54 million pounds worth of property that we traded in 2019, that equated to 510 property deals. Now, that's a hell of a lot of property. Some would say, more than most estate agents would sell in a year. But here I am, 
acting as a one man band, selling deals to his database. And tonight I'll be showing you how you can get to that kind of level. It took, it's taken me a few years to get to that level, but that's why I say talking about goals, how many deals you want to source in a year. So start off by saying we'll do one a month, start off by saying do one every month, whatever it may be, depending on how much time you can dedicate to the course. Now, my goal for 2020 is that with the help of this fantastic tool that we've created, the Property Investor app, I want to trade a thousand properties in 2020. And that, that's a massive goal. I want to become the largest well known deal trader in the UK. That's my goal. I want to trade a thousand properties. So that's my business goal. I've got some fitness goals as well. No, not fitness goals. It's almost like suicide missions, if you want to call it that. Um, so my wife, uh, I said to my wife that I fancied a fitness challenge. So I entered myself into Ironman. So Ironman in the UK, which is in Bolton, which is happening in uh, July. Um, July 2020, and that is where we do 2.4 mile swim, 112 mile bike ride, followed by a 26.2 mile run. And I thought that was quite a decent challenge. My wife said, it's not enough. I thought, hang on, okay, that's quite tough. So what she's actually doing is entered me also for the Ironman 70.3, which is in Amman, which is actually happening in a couple of weeks, which is half the amount. So 1.2 uh, mile swim, 56 mile, uh, bike followed by 13.1 uh, one miles uh, run and then as well as that she's entered me into the Paris Marathon so she's actually throwing me under the bus and literally trying to make me do a hell of a lot more and I'm really gonna have to I'm gonna have to push myself physically like today I've been out and I've uh, ran uh, sorry I've cycled for 35 miles so that is a bit of the challenge now today I've done that but also I'm having to start to train this to understand the different pain barriers and talk myself through the pain barriers. And this is something that I'm really struggling with, but I will get there. So let's keep moving on. They're my goals for 2020. Now, I've, I've, there's a lady online uh, called Sandy Baines, and she was a young lady that came to become a part of the Elite Property Tribe, which I call the EPT, three years ago with no property experience and facing some difficult times. And what she, uh, I asked her to write a little bit about her journey in the EPT. And she goes, with Ash's hands on uh, mentorship and guidance, as well as a supportive community, I was able to learn both the soft and hard skills required to talk about, uh, to really turn this around and become a successful HMO owner and deal sourcer. This was also provided the funds I needed to pursue my other aspirations. I would sincerely recommend the EPT and Ash's mentorship if you wanted to become a successful property entrepreneur and achieve financial freedom, as long as you're willing to put in the hard work, the opportunities are endless. And that's from Sunday Baines in Derby. Now, I'm gonna talk about two case studies and I'm gonna bring the young lady onto my left in a second. Her name is actually Shireen Ilahi, and as you would have uh, guessed by the surname, that she's actually my wife. Um, and we're going to talk about two properties. The first one's actually in Wolverhampton. So uh, this is a property that we saw uh, that we saw, and the owner contacted us and he says, you know what, to be fair, this is a property that we're looking to sell. Are you interested in buying? I thought, OK, potentially. You can see from the picture or if you're if you're watching this online, that the property looks a little bit tired. It, it's near, in need of some TLC. And at the time, I thought, well, yeah, OK, we've already got some HMOs on the road. So I've got a 10 bed HMO on the opposite side of the road. I thought, yeah, this could actually be quite a nice addition to the portfolio. And I spoke to my wife and I said, do you fancy a project? And she goes, well, yeah, kind of. So what I did is that I presented this opportunity to her. It's a six bed HMO with also an additional one bedroom flat. I said, well, if I can get this property at the right kind of level, would you be interested in taking this property on? And this would be pretty much your pet, pet project. And she goes, yeah, absolutely. Now, bear in mind that the property had been vacant for three years due to the lack of funds. I said to the owner, I'm not interested in buying it, but I would be interested in taking control of it. And he goes, what do you mean by that? I said, well, let's face it, the property has been vacant three years. It's been derelict. It's, uh, it's actually 
you know, it's getting worse as the weather. So I'm not sure if you can see it on the webinar, you can see it on the bay window on the left hand side, the lead has been ripped off, which means that there's been a leak, which has also caused a lot of rough, rot and damp internally. So it's getting worse. So I said, well, I'd be interested in bringing the property up to standard and taking it off you on a seven year basis. And he goes, okay, well, we started talking about all the different options. And we agreed on a seven year deal where I would lease the property off him, where I would give him a guaranteed income. And as a result, it worked extremely well. Um, it worked extremely well. So we're now giving him a guaranteed rent. Off the back of that, we've now uh, also taken a three month rent free period and also have the option to purchase within the future. And then that would potentially give us a cash flow of around £1,200 a month. Now, just so you know, guys, I'm going to actually cut the live short here. So if you're watching on Facebook, you're watching on Instagram, you're watching on YouTube, etc., please join us on the live session and uh, watch the whole 90 minutes. And I'll speak to you all soon. Thank you. Right, guys, so we're now just live on the webinar. So thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much for your patience. Um, and I'm hoping that you're going to find this opportunity, uh, this webinar of fantastic value. So let's get moving on. So I said to my wife that we're going to take this property on. Off the back of that, my wife has now started some work on this property. So this property requires some capital input. And we had the opportunity of either deciding, are we gonna keep this property ourselves? Um, are we gonna keep this property ourselves, or are we gonna trade it? And we had this opportunity, and the one thing that I love about deal trading is the fact that we choose what we do. Do we keep it, do we sell it? Or do we, do we keep it and do it ourselves and add it to a portfolio? Do we literally negotiate the deal and sell it? So with this one, we've decided to keep it. It was initially offered for sale, but structured as a rent-to-rent -rent deal. It wouldn't have been possible if we didn't have the skills to source deals. Now, here's another project, which is in Cornwall. Now, me and my wife, we was always after a second property that we could use as a holiday home. So somewhere where we wanted to escape to, we wanted to spend a couple of days on the weekend, go down to the coast, enjoy some time with our family on the beach, right next to the seafront. So another one, this was another opportunity that came to me by a deal source, one of my deal sources. And it came to me and says, Ash, we've got this property, and this is a property that the vendor would happy to be happy to sell below market value. And I thought, okay, this is interesting. I looked at the opportunity and then I started to understand the reason as to why the uh, owner wanted to sell. The owner, uh, the owner is cur uh, currently lives abroad. And the reason for him to sell is because he, could, he struggled to find a competent property manager in the UK. I thought, okay, well, there may be another way around this. And with some negotiations, so the vendor lives in Tokyo, and we agreed a 10-year rent-to-rent deal with this property with the option to purchase. And we actually had a six-month rent-free period. Now, just so you know, this property was actually immaculate from the outset. So we could have took this property on with actually not spending a single penny on it. But my wife wanted to make this property our home, and she, she spent a little bit of money on it, not, not a lot of money, uh, a couple of thousand pound on just bringing the furnishings up to our standard and now we use that so we're off there next weekend just to, so we decide uh, every every other weekend or a few weekends a year that we go and spend some time by the sea um, and this is in whilst we're not stopping there it's now available on airbnb uh, booking.com etc etc so you can go to tincroftcottage.co.uk and you can have a quick, a quick look at what we've actually done with the property now, as a property is rented as a serviced accommodation unit, now this uh, produces a cash flow approximately between uh, approximately £2,000 a month, which provides an income of around £24,000 a year. Again, it was initially offered for sale, but then it then structured as a lease option due to negotiation. And this wouldn't have been possible if I didn't have the skills to source the deals. 
Now, I'm going to quickly hand you over to a young lady uh, to the name of Shireen Ilahi. She's going to tell you a little bit about her background because although she's married to a property investor, um, it's never always been an easy journey for her. And I'll tell you what, instead of me talking, I'll pass you straight over to Shireen. Hi everyone, um, so my background, I was a teacher uh, for over 10 years, um, just before I had my uh, children, I was a deputy head teacher, so at the height of my career, um, I was just 30 years old and I'd done incredibly well. Um, I had my children and after having children, as, as many sort of women do in my position, um, I couldn't handle both. I couldn't handle a glittering career as well as being a dedicated mum the way that I wanted to. Um, I, you know, I was missing lots of opportunities to sort of be around the children and things like that. Um, so I made the rather hard decision of going part time. Um, when I was part time, I never felt like a good enough teacher, and I never felt like a good enough mum. I just, I couldn't do either um, job justice. So uh, we made the decision that I would leave work. Um, and I dedicate my time to looking after the children. But um, working with somebody who, well, living with somebody who's highly motivated and committed and very driven, it was really hard to sort of just take a step back from that. Um, so I knew I needed to do something to keep me busy, um, but I wasn't quite sure what. When the children started to go back to school and uh, both girls were in full-time education, um, I started looking at what else was on the job market and um, the sort of things that I found that were part time were either nighttime jobs, um, Royal Mail sorting, uh, there was a couple of shop assistant jobs, so there were lots of cleaning jobs, um, secretaries, and pay wise, nothing like what I was used to as a profession. Um, and it, it was really, it was difficult, it was a really difficult time because I, I'd come from a very um, from a place where it was a very well respected profession to then sort of looking at jobs and I'm thinking well you know until unless I start from the absolute basics and become um, an apprentice and sort of work my way up there's no other profession that I can join um, and Ash said well why don't you join property why don't you do something in property you know I can show you what to do etc um, and I was always I always said no I was no no it's not for me I, I don't know enough about it and I think for me I had sort of three barriers that I had created in my own mind and I think often quite read, quite often misconceptions. Um, first one being I felt like you had to have money to make money in property uh, which I now know isn't necessarily, the, um, necessarily that important. Uh, the next one I felt like um, it was really risky uh, in terms of what you were investing in and you would be tied into it and it was always a really risky thing, I guess, from the portrayal of property market in the media. Um, and then the third one, I always felt like I don't know enough about it. I don't know how to run HMOs. I don't know how to do all of the things that um, I was talked about. And so um, we started the Teamcroft project and um, it sort of started from there. And I realised that actually a lot of what I was doing, I should sort of, teach me, I guess that it was a bit like a mentorship and it would teach me along the way and it was things like what licenses you required and what safety things you needed and how to do certain things. So it started from that and after, you know, after about six months I thought, you know what, I've got this, I can do it. And that's from somebody who was really scared of sort of joining the property market, didn't feel like I knew enough. Um, but I think the sort of on the job training, so to speak, and learning as I went was the best thing for me um, and just you know I didn't need the theory behind it I didn't need the classroom practice it was the daily what do I do here what should I do here um, Ash would add me to some private whatsapp groups that um, he's involved with and they were a huge source of networking um, and meeting with other professionals in the field and just having a quick chat was was a huge way of sort of learning a vast amount um, so now we've taken on our second project um, and it's we're just shy of having started the property journey a year ago, I think yeah. it'll be a year next week. Um, and I choose my own hours, um, I do all the school runs, I, I stop working about two o'clock 
um, have a bit of time to myself, um, turn up to projects when I want. Um, and it, it has really sort of given me the opportunities to be in the position I want to be. Um, and, you know, it has replaced quite a lot of my income from what I was doing as a, as a deputy. So um, there isn't anything else that I could have done work-wise that would give me all of that. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm really glad that I uh, made that transition. Brilliant. Brilliant. Thank you very much, Shireen. Uh, so I just wanted to share it because there'll be lots of people in this position who may be um, either or not, or even uh, a mom of children, mom of two children, who's got lots of time during the day. I'm not sure whether they can take this transition from mom into businesswoman because that's exactly what she is. Businesswoman, she's dealing with people like Airbnb, Booking.com. She's dealing with customers. She's checking in, checking out, so, and she does that all from the per, from the safety of her home in Wolverhampton, even though the property is down in Cornwall. So there is this misconception that you know it is quite labour intensive, etc. But if you get the systems and everything in place, then these are things that all can work and work around you and your lifestyle. I probably spend about 45 minutes a week at the moment because all the systems are in place. So there you have it. So Shireen says that she spends 45 minutes a week on her service accommodation property uh, because all the systems are in place. You know, someone books, all the messages get sent out to them. We've got the cleaners in place and everything runs uh, quite swimmingly. So thank you very much for that, Shireen. Thank you very much. So let's get moving on because I know that you guys want to know a lot more about deal trading. So the reason why I brought her in is because she she would not have been able to do that. She didn't have the skill set of deal sourcing, deal trading, and also running, becoming a property investor. So why I love deal trading? Let's get through these quite quickly because let's get through to the meat of it. First of all, I see all the best deals first. That was the main reason why I did this because I can talk to you, you know, you're more than welcome to come and spend, spend some time with me in Wolverhampton. I can take you around property after property where deals have been approached to me and I've looked at them and thought, you know what, I actually want that one. I bought um, in 2017, 2018, I actually bought a block of 50 apartments. Now, the reason these were all off market, they came direct to me, direct to the vendor, and I managed to negotiate fantastic deals with them. So uh, to make sure that I wasn't overstretched in all the offerings that we were doing, one thing that I suggested is that we structure the purchases so that they will happen every three months. So I would buy a block of 10 in three months, another block of 10 in a couple of months, another block of 10, etc. So I structured these, but I could do that because I was direct to the vendor. Now, as a deal trader, as a deal sourcer, you don't need to worry about tenants because you're not managing any properties. You're not taking any maintenance calls. Now, if you guys are property investors and you've got some HMOs, you may have taken some maintenance calls over the last month, over Christmas and New Year. It does happen. And, you know, I've got quite a decent sized portfolio and it does happen. And it can be a bit annoying sometimes. A big one is no bank borrowings and not tying up any of your money. Because with deal trading, deal sourcing, you're not proclaiming to be the buyer. You're not buying the property. You've got no intention of buying the property. You're literally facilitating the sale, which means that you can deal with any property in any town, any city, or even country. Now, one thing that I said to Shireen uh, a couple of weeks ago is that a property came up actually in Marbella. And I said, well, oh, this could be quite interesting. And we could have structured it as a lease option. But Shireen said that she didn't want it in another country yet. So we actually turned that one, we actually turned that one away and we structured it as a deal for someone else as an investor, uh, international investor. But we could have taken that one on. So it doesn't have to stop just with being in the UK. It can be started and stopped whenever you require. So if you're going on holiday and you think, well, in actual fact, yeah, I don't want to uh, don't want to be disturbed whilst on holiday, you just stop looking for property. It can be done anywhere around the world. All you need is a mobile phone and a laptop. Now, I've got a, I don't know if any of you guys subscribe to my YouTube channel. There's a guy that I've talked about on previous webinars, a guy called Raheel. He actually deal sources for me, even though he's in Saudi Arabia. Now, I've talked about Raheel a lot on previous YouTube, channel, uh, YouTube videos. He's based in Saudi Arabia. He works in a job that takes him 12 hours a day, but even then, he still manages to find time to deal source properties in the UK whilst he's in Saudi Arabia. We're gonna take into consideration that different language, different time zone, different country. So if he can do it 
in Saudi Arabia, my question is, why can't you? And sourcing does not have to stop a property. The skill peak can be used to source almost anything. Once you understand how to get in direct in contact with a vendor of that certain product, there's no reason why you can't adapt this to cars, for argument's sake. You know, how many times have you seen the auto trader where you can actually call the owner direct? Now, I'm not interested in cars to trade, but certainly that's a very easy strategy for me to trade as well if I wish to. So let's keep moving on. So I don't know, I've just pressed something there. So let's keep moving on. So why I love uh, dual trading? Very simply, no solicitors, no surveyors, no refurbishment works, no builders, no contracts. So I'm, I've cut out all the people that cause me pain, cause me issues, because they're the people that bring issues the way that I see it, because there is no risk. You don't own anything, so therefore there's nothing that could go wrong. Now, just to give you an example of that, I'm going to talk through a slide in a second. I'm going to talk through a slide in a second. There's three elements to deal sourcing and deal trading. You've got the vendor, you've got you as the facilitator, and you've got the purchaser. That if you take a property off a vendor and you try and put it out to your investor network and it doesn't sell, what exactly have you lost? The honest answer is you've probably lost a bit of time. You've not spent any money. You've just spent a bit of time trying to find a purchaser. And if it doesn't sell, guess what? You go back to the vendor and say, sorry, at that price, we haven't been able to get a buy to, you know, and this is your point to renegotiate. There's nothing wrong with that. Now, think about this in the current world or the current property market. That's exactly what an estate agent would do. So therefore, what makes you different the fact is that estate agents generally tend to keep within their area. Now, you as an independent, you can go wherever you want. One day you could be looking in Doncaster, tomorrow you could be looking in Stoke, the day after you could be looking in Scotland, the day after if you wanted to, you could go to Ireland, the day after you could go to Marbella. Not saying that you should do that because that's quite a scattered gun, a scattered gun approach, but you, there, are, there are ways that you, know, you can look at it wherever you want. Now, the reason why I say this is um, when you look at the market and you look at the financial markets, you can trade property wherever you want because what you do is you literally facilitate the price according to what's going on in the market. If a house was worth 100 grand last year and today it's dropped down to 90 grand, you work your figures off 90 grand, not 100 grand. Now, people, I don't understand where back in 2008 where people were going bust and they're all sorts. I didn't really understand that because all you could do is facilitate the market and it's pretty much like the gold market if you look at it in that respect. Now, all these people that offered to buy gold, today the gold price, let's just say for argument's sake, it's £1.56 a gram. I don't know how it works, but I'm just using this as an example. Let's say it's £1.56 a gram. Now, tomorrow, Let's say that something happens in the financial markets or some, uh, in the markets there, which means that the gold price has dropped down to £1.40 a gram. Do you reckon they're still going to be offering £1.56 a gram? Or will they have adapted the pricing down to £1.40 a gram? They're not stupid enough to offer £1.56 a gram today when they, when they know that the markets have dropped. So they'll be adapting their pricing accordingly. And this is exactly what deal sources do. Unfortunately, estate agents, you know, as much as I love them, but they're very, they don't like to react. Um, okay, so Christos, if you hold on, I'll be with you in a couple of minutes. So we'll keep moving on. So with the boom, sellers are in control as the prices continue to increase. With the bust, buyers are in control as properties struggle to sell. And you as a trader, you just adjust your pricing according to the economic climate. Now, Brexit, massive uncertainty in the market. What's going to happen to property prices? Are they going to increase? Are they going to drop? Are they going to have a bit of a correction? We've seen that London has taken a bit of a tumble by almost like up to 20%. Before, London was untouchable. Now, as it stands, people are actually investing outside London to try and make sure their money goes further. So Brexit 
is one thing. Then there's the introduction of this section 24. This section 24 is about all uh, mortgage and interest relief rates, making sure that they uh, you can no longer use that as a cost, will now come as part of the profit. Problem is, I'm not going to go through all this now. If you want to know about section 24, stick it into Google. You can, you can read many articles about it. Interest rates, are they going to remain at a low level or are they going to increase? And the economy, how is the economy going to adjust after, after leaving? You know, again, there will be some uncertainty. There's going to be a bit of turmoil where people are not sure what's going to happen. And ultimately, this has an impact on the market. Are people still going to buy? Are they going to wait? If they're not going to buy, does that mean that prices are going to start to decrease? Are they going to start to fall? If they start to fall, it then becomes a buyer's market. Does that mean that we've got now got a position where we can start to renegotiate deals with vendors? If it was worth 100 grand, let's say in December, and let's just say that we go out of Brexit in March, for argument's sake, um, if that house was worth 100 grand, now it tumbles down to 80 grand, are we going to now go and renegotiate? So these are just little things that you've got to take into consideration that do affect the market and you guys as deal sources. Because as a deal sorter, there's, like I said, there's three principles, the vendor, the sourcer, and the investor. The vendor needs help selling their property. An agent, that have, uh, an agent may have tried for the last three months. Now, at the sourcer, you may be better at understanding investment properties and matchmaking to the right investor. I'm gonna introduce you to a sourcer in a second, a young gentleman called Christos. And then finally, there's uh, the investor who purchases the property, which meets their criteria and pays a fee for the service. Now, with the vendor, you've got to understand two things. What is the, where is the pain and what is the motivation? So why are they selling? Why have they approached you? You know, it may be lots of things. It could be financial difficulties. It could be marital breakups. It could be that they just want to move countries. It could be that they don't have the time and the effort that they want to put into property. There's so many different ways. And uh, as a sourcer, you've got to understand how is it that you can add value to this property? Is it that you're going to get a discount in it? Is it that you're going to be able to structure it in a different, in a strategic manner? Like so, and creating it and turns it into a, a rental, rent or lease option, etc. And as an investor, you've got to kind of understand where, why would they buy this property? What makes this property so special? Does that kind of make sense? So there are three points. So we're going to come to the agent's secrets in a second, but I want to introduce you to a young man to the right. His name's Christos. Now, the reason why I'm introducing you to Christos is because Christos, I've been working with Christos for uh, a couple of years. And what I've really seen in Christos is his ability to negotiate and his ability to build rapport. And I'd like Christos to tell us a little bit about how he's been dealing with agents and vendors, and more importantly, how he's creating real win-win scenarios. And Christos, if you wouldn't mind, actually talking about the deal that you're actually currently doing in London as well, because people have this misconception that deal sourcing cannot happen in London. Uh, people say that deals do not happen in London. So Christos, and you've managed to create a deal where you create a real win-win, not only for the vendor, but also for the investor too. So Christos, over to you. Tell us a little bit about who are you, where are you from? Hi Ash, thanks for getting me on. Um, so I'm based in Milton Keynes and uh, as you mentioned on the slide there, uh, started a couple of years ago uh, recruiting my own daughter, my youngest daughter Amelia to come and work for me as my PA, uh, mainly because I wanted to scale up my business and just needed to outsource some work. So the timing worked out really well and one of the reasons I chose to come and join you over you know many other trainers out there is because I'd already met you previously um, I'd also you know investigated more about you and other trainers and I even quizzed you on a particular question I don't know if you remember a couple of years ago I said you know what is it that makes you stand out from other trainers and your answer was accessibility and you were a hundred percent right because over the last two years anytime I've phoned you sent you a message on whatsapp uh, anytime I've needed to get hold of you, I've always got hold of you or you've got back to me that same day. Um, we, Amelia and I even came and spent the day in your office, which was you know, a great educational point of view as well. 
So, you know, accessibility was something you said, and that has rung true because it's very difficult with a lot of other trainers to actually, you know, get them on the phone the same day, let alone, you know, get a response from an email. So that's been a very good benefit for myself and the media. Um, talking about the London deal that you just mentioned. Um, before you go to London deal, so just so you know, um, so so far you've done some rent to rent deals. Were they yeah, so so I've I've sourced a lot of different type of deals over the last few years, and obviously I've bought some from yourself. I've sold some through yourself. Um, so it's been a, a two way street from that point of view. Yeah. Um, done rent to rent deals, purchase deals, and uh, the, the latest deal that uh, we're just in the process of doing is the London one. Um, a lot of people are a bit scared about London. They say, oh, it's really hard to find deals in London. Um, obviously, you sourced a deal in London, and I've put it together for one of my investors, and we've put it together in a uh, slightly more um, creative way, I guess, than most people would. So uh, I'm sure you don't mind me sharing the, the basics of it. So I've actually taken an option on the property uh, to buy it from the vendor and I'm selling that property to my investor. And so, but would you, you know, from your experience, if you approached an agent, an estate agent with that opportunity yeah. or with that yeah. proposal, how do you think they would have felt or how do you most, think they would most react? Agents, yeah, most agents would really struggle to comprehend what we're doing. Um, you'll find a few agents, but very rarely do agents sort of really comprehend that or want to go down that route. They just want a quick and simple transaction in their normal fashion because that's what they're used to. Um, so obviously the benefit of this is we're dealing directly with the vendor. And I had a conversation with her and explained to her what we wanted to do, put it into very simple terms, uh, what we wanted to do and the reason behind it. And she was very understanding of it and, um, you know, completely agreed to move ahead with it in the structure that we wanted to do it. So she's very happy because we're offering her the full asking price that she wants for the property. Uh, we've also um, offered to pay her legal fees if she uses one of our recommended lawyers, which she's also agreed to. So that's another benefit for her. And my investor um, will have the benefit of effectively having a property with no deposit out of his own pocket so he's obviously going to get some benefit from it because he's going to have a property that is worth more than what he's paid and he's literally got no money out of pocket from a deposit point of view so of course when you're talking about london properties you know we're talking about uh, you know a couple of hundred grand so that's quite a nice saving for him okay brilliant and so what would you say is your key le what's been your key learning takeaway well, over the last couple of years, um, one of the things that I've felt has been a massive benefit is that you actually, regular as clockwork, will do webinars on a Monday evening, and you've got literally every subject under the sun covered, and then you put them up on the website, so if people miss it, they can actually go back and listen to it, which is great. You have the communities on Facebook and WhatsApp, and I'm very active on the WhatsApp group. So, you know, I'm, I'm always learning from people in the group. I'm always giving back information to people on the group. There's such a, a great collection of people with different experiences in different sections. Everybody's learning from each other every day. Um, also, the accountability side of things. So one of the things that uh, obviously you do is you pair people up and you make them accountable to each other. Uh, you and I even had a seven week session last year where we, we had a bit of fun and we did some accountability together and that sort of pushed us both in a forward direction with some things we were doing, holding each other accountable every week. Um, and then as I mentioned earlier, obviously I've sold some deals through you and I've bought some deals through you. So, you know, we're actually doing business together, you and I and also other people on the platform. Brilliant. Okay. Well, thank you very much for that, Christos. Is there anything that you want to say? It was a pleasure. And I just want to say, you know, anybody out there who's listening today, if you feel like you need a bit of assistance getting out of your comfort zone, Ash is the man to help you do that. Um, so, great evening, everybody. And thanks, Ash. Brilliant. Thanks, Christos. Have a lovely evening. Take care. Bye. Okay, so Chris has talked a little bit about estate agents. So let's quickly go now back because a lot of the marketing that I put together for this webinar was about estate agents. So let's get a bit of insight and get the inside info. So you've got to think about estate agents. What is their core business? 
when we talk about their core business, what is it that they look to do? Now, they want, they want to sell property. They want to sell property because as a result of selling property, they generate a commission. Now, how the commission uh, structure works is the fact that, let's just say, for argument's sake, the house was on the market for £100,000. Let's keep numbers quite simple and easy here. If the market of property value was £100,000, let's say that they've agreed that the vendor, upon successful sale, will pay a commission of between 1% to 2% plus VAT. Let's just say, for argument's sake here, 2%. So the commission to that agent would be £2,000 plus VAT, which is equivalent to £2,400. Now, that's a nice bit of business for the agent. So what do you believe? Do you think the agent is going to want to try and find a buyer to purchase the property at full market value? The reason why they're going to try and push to get the best possible value or the best possible price for the vendor is because the more they achieve, the more commission they generate. Now, admittedly, there's three kinds of values when we deal with properties. We've got the marketing value, we've got the market value, and then we've got hope value. We've got hope value, which is the value that they hope to achieve. We've got the market value, which is what a comparable property is sold for, and we've got the marketing value. So if the property was on the market, was roughly worth around £100,000, the agent would put it on for between one hundred and five pounds to 110000 with a view knowing that the property price would be reduced or would be negotiated down to 100000 Does everyone get that, by the way? So I just don't want to lose everyone. Okay, so I've been told... Uh, okay, so there's a quick quick question. Is that uh, I've been uh, I keep getting told that uh, that action as a deal sourcer is in law taken as an estate agent. Therefore, deal sourcer needs to meet all the compliance that estate agents have have to have. Okay, great point, great question. Uh, thanks, Julie, for bringing that up. So every deal sourcer needs to be compliant. So when we talk about compliant, we're talking about having indemnity. Uh, sorry, uh, liability insurance. So uh, that can vary depending on the level of deals that you're looking to do. Uh, you've also got to be a member of the ICO, the Information Commission Officer. You've also got to have a, um, a membership with a property ombudsman or like the property redress scheme. And then finally, become, uh, have a membership with the anti-money laundering regulations. So you've got to register with the anti-money laundering regulations. So they're the four main sections. On average, it costs between 1,500 to 2,000 pounds a year. But when you look at it from a point of view, now some of you may be thinking, oh, that's a lot of money. But in the actual grand scheme of things, it's less than one deal. So that should spur you on to do a deal. So yes, you do have to be compliant. And every people that say that you don't need to be compliant because you're selling it through a different sourcer, and that's what's considered co-sourcing, believe it or not, you still need to be compliant. Does that make sense? So let's get that extremely clear. Everyone that is sourcing deals needs to be compliant. So go back to my point, uh, go back to my point now. Estate agents, they need our help. The reason why I say that is because you've got to remember that every property that they offer, a lot of properties that they have will be to the home owner market, but there'll be a certain segment of properties that they generate that is only really applicable to investors. So these may be properties that may be unmortgageable, that may have structural issues, that may have properties that need work doing to them. Now, just you've got to imagine that if there's a property that is in need of modernization and is targeted towards the first time buyers category. Do first time buyers have the sufficient funds not only to purchase a property but also do the refurb? Genu genuinely or generally not. So, therefore, that property may sit on the market waiting for a builder to buy it, waiting for a property investor to buy it. Now, we can fast track that for the property uh, for the estate agents because us guys as deal sources hopefully will have a database of investors that they're looking 
to uh, that they're looking to sell properties to. So if you speak to a estate agent that says, hi Connells, or hi right, uh, hi your, uh, sorry, um, hi Connells, hi Reed Rains, whatever estate agent may be, but okay, my name is, let's just use a couple of guys, my name's David Carrara. Um, the reason for me contacting you is because I understand that you've got this property. Now, just so you know, uh, I'm a deal sourcer, I'm a deal trader, or I'd always call yourself, I work with property investors uh, across the UK, and the reason why I'm contacting you is because I understand that you've got this property, which would be perfect and ripe for one of my property investors. Now, just so you know, when I pitch to an estate agent, I very clearly tell them how we can work with them and how we can help them. Now, what are, what's one of the biggest concerns that an estate agent has? Think about this for a second. What is one of the biggest concern an estate agent would have? Why would they instantly think, well, hang on, this guy has turned up on the phone, David's turned up on the phone, and he's now saying that he can sell my property. What's the first thing that you guys, now you guys are skeptics here, tell me, what's the first thing that you think Okay, so one of the questions, the first thing that someone's come up with is, okay, what's in it for them? So just so you know, okay, so uh, Jay has said no commission. The deal, okay, so Akshay says the deal doesn't go through. Um, that's Julie says that that you may somehow pinch it from them, which is always a concern. You're another estate agent, Mitesh says. He's going to lose their commission. They will be cut out. Who is getting commission? Your job, my job, for me, and will I get paid? Their time to sell. Okay, they don't get their commission. Okay, so that's the biggest uh, that's the biggest concern that the estate agent will have. You know, I'm meant to be selling this house. I'm meant to be getting the commission. If this guy turns up, what am I going to be doing? Or how does it work? So, you know, these are the biggest concerns that the estate agent. So, just so you know, in all the deals that I do with the estate agents, I say to them, guys, well, you're going to be making your commission from the seller, as you would normally. So when a when an estate agent sells a house for um, normally for the owner, the owner will pay them a commission on, on completion. And what I say to the estate agent says, guys, okay, just so you know, the way that we operate is that we make our money from the buyer, and you guys make your money from the seller. So you guys still make the money that you would have achieved normally. We make our money from the buyer, and pretty much what we're doing is actually helping you market your property to our bank of investors with a view of trying to get you a sale. Now, the other concern that a lot of estate agents will have uh, is the fact that you're going to start to play around with their processes and their systems. Because believe it or not, I've dealt with lots of agents, and one of the biggest concerns that they come back is say, oh, Shaka, okay, we've got set systems and processes in place, and we try not to deviate away from that. And I said to them, guys, don't panic. Because what we do, very simply, is that once we've got an investor in place and then pay that commission, we then put, give you all the contact details to the estate agent, and then they conduct the sale as they would normally. If an estate agent thinks that you're going to start to play around with their systems or start to play around with their sales process and make it more complicated, they're not going to want to deal with you. So do you understand that? When you speak to an estate agent, you've got to go there within the mind. If you've got to think of what is it the estate agent actually wants? They want to sell the property. They want it to be easy as possible and they don't want it to play around with their systems that they've got in place at the moment. So all we do is literally say, okay, we're gonna find you a buyer, we make our money from the buyer, you make your money from the seller, so the systems haven't messed around so far. All we need is to be able to show our property investor the property, you guys still conduct the viewing, and off the back of that they say yes. We will then give you the purchaser's name, phone number, email address, and you conduct the sale as you would normally. So we're facilitating, we're just bringing the buyer to their attention, that's exactly what we're doing. And for in order for us to do that, I always ask for some exclusivity on the deal. So if we can get them removed off Bright Moves, Hoopla on the market, etc., etc., that would be fantastic because the last thing you want to do, spend all this time going off and finding these deals, 
putting them in front of an investor, the investor says, well, in actual fact, I've seen that on right move or Zoopla. Yeah, thank you very much. I'll now take it and I'll call the agent direct. So there's got to be a working relationship between you and the agent. So does that kind of make sense? Is everyone with me? Is everyone with me on that? So Ali says, after your offer is it accepted by the estate agent, how long do you have to find investors to sell the deal? Does the property become sold to uh, sold subject to contract? What is uh, STC, et cetera, exactly? So thank you. So SSTC, sold subject to contract. So pretty much, so, um, so Kelvin says that he understands the process. So Jay says, how do you get exclusive to and what do you say? So very simply, when I speak to an estate agent, I say, guys, okay, I appreciate you guys don't want to lose your deal, but equally, I also don't want to be, go out and do a lot of work and then find that someone's trying to cut me out of the equation. And they understand that because they don't want that to happen to them too. Remember, we're working in the same field now. They're, we're trying to sell their property. And what I do generally, I say to them, I want exclusivity. So I want to have the property listed off right move for, you know, as it could be as little as 24 hours. It could be as maximum as, you know, a month, depending on how motivated the vendor is. They will have to go and get some clearance from the vendor to make sure that the vendor is happy for that property to go off right move uh, or Zoopla because let's face it, they're saying now that you're no longer marketing the property. And again, this is one of the concerns that the vendor, uh, the agents may have because they don't know who David is. As far as they're concerned, David is another person that's just called them and says, hi, my name's David, I'm a property investor, this is what I can do, blah, 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 blah. Now, what to say and what not to say. Now, I've dealt with hundreds, probably even thousands of estate agents across the country. And one of the things is their biggest gripe is the fact that estate uh, property investors call them all the time. Hi, my name's David, I'm a property investor. I'm looking for all those properties that you've struggled to sell, that are tired, uh, and we'll make you an offer. We're a cash buyer, we will complete within seven days, and all that kind of promise. If I'm going to speak openly, that is a load of garbage. And the reason being is that they've all heard it. This is stuff that I was saying to people in 2003. We're in 2020. The market has become a lot more sophisticated. Agents want to be able to put a face to a name. Agents want to be able to speak to you. Agents want to be able to understand a little bit. They want to build rapport with you. They want to check you out. They want to look on your website. They want to understand what you're all about. So it's always good to have a one-page website or something so that you can understand. Um, so that you can understand. So they can understand who they're dealing with. So you know your website can make you look a lot bigger than a one-man band. So you look at the Property Investor app. I started that. That's me, one person. But if you look at the website, we're challenging. Places like Right Move, Zoopla are on the market. If you look at us on the App Store, we're listed fifth under Right Move, Zoopla on the market and Purple Bricks worldwide on the App Store. That's phenomenal success. So when I speak to an agent, say, guys, okay, this is who I am. I'm going to sell it to my investors on my investor database through the Property Investor app. So one of the things that you guys can do as deal sources is actually sell your deals on the app as well. So Lee has said, what's the most efficient way of identifying suitable properties from the millions of properties out there? Now, Lee, that's a great question because you're going to have to come up with a system where you can identify. So I've got lots of things in place where I see all the deals first. I see the deal straight away and I run the numbers on it straight away. And literally then I'll pick up the phone to the agent and say, okay, yeah, I like this one. What can we do? What's the, what's the motivation? And I ask the question, and when I speak to the vendor, when I speak to the agent, I ask them the question, so what's the, what's the owner's story? 
What's the owner's stories? Oh, no, so this is a probate property. So the person has just passed away and the kids are dealing with it or they're going through a financial difficulty, whatever it may be, there's always a story behind the property. So understanding the pain and the motivation. Now, as we spoke about with Christos, you know, some agents will be a little bit more familiar and uh, get to the point of you know, understanding what you're trying to do. Now, we're getting more agents to offer us like, rent to rent deals or commercial deals. And previously, this wasn't the case. And this is because they've become a little bit more educated as to how they can monetize other deals. Now, one thing that you could do to an agent is say to them, guys, okay, you make your money off the seller, I make our money off the buyer, but also I may even give you a percentage split of what I achieve. Remember what they're, what they're, what one of their main factors is, their commission is a main factor. So you could say to them, well, not only are you making money off the seller, but I'll give you a little bit of my fee as well, if we can do it this way. So you're not bribing them. This is, this is a business transaction for them. And there's nothing wrong with what they're doing there, providing that everything is declared. So you're saying to them that if the house is worth 100 grand, they make 2,400, which is 2% 2 plus VAT off the owner. And providing that you sell it to your investor, let's say that you charge three grand, they will, they will bill you for 1% plus VAT off what, what you've made. So 3,000, 2% uh, 2 of 3,000, oh, sorry, 2% 2 of 1% uh, of 3,000, 300 pound plus VAT, which is 360 pound. So now they've made 2,400 plus 3,600, they've now made, Oh, uh, my maths, oh man, okay, you guys are going to have to help me out with that, 2,760. So they made an additional 360 pounds, but if they do that multiple times a month, what do you reckon that's going to happen to their figures? Now, as a letting agent, you've got to remember there's been other things that have hit the markets, that are like tenant fee ban, all the other fee bans that they're no longer able to uh, collect off tenants. That's had a massive impact on their profit line, and their, their bottom line, approximately 20 to 25%. They've got to be able to try and make that money back for their business to be sustainable. So by you offering them an additional income line, do you think they're going to say yes to you? This is what you've got to start to think about. You've got to start to think outside the box as to how can I start working with agents? What do I offer them? What do they offer me? And this is a real win-win scenario. And I talk here from experience. I talk here from experience. Uh, so, because I speak to agents every day, I get exclusivity on properties every day. We list them on the app. We're working with agents. And I'll talk to you about an agent in a second. Now, when I talk about a shadowing day, so uh, the Elite Property Tribe, which we, um, we've we abbreviated to EPT. So, person in the top right-hand corner, a guy called Jay Uday. So, Jay was on the webinar last week. He's actually on the webinar this week as well. If you want to, if you want to hear from him, just say yes or no. Just say. Uh, so Eugene says, "Can I ask a question, please?" Absolutely, Eugene. Feel free to ask away. So Jay was a um, he was a full time teacher, believe it or not. He had no property experience. He had no money to invest. He's one of the newest CPT members. And within the space of a week, he has negotiated two HMO deals, which have been sourced and packaged. The deals offered to investors and have made £10,000 in fees. So straight away, people have said, yes, let's hear from Jay. So, okay, so Jay, uh, Jay Uday, Jay, this wasn't planned, by the way. Uh, so Jay, hi, are you there? Hi there, can you hear me? Yeah, very well, thank you. Uh, thanks for being online, Jay. So Jay, quick introduction, just tell us a little bit about who who is Jay and what uh, what's Jay all about, and more importantly, what have you done over the last week? Yeah, so uh, basically my background is in teaching and I, I took a bit of time off uh, from teaching uh, to sort of kind of take care of my wife um, a bit more. And so I decided to join the EPT. And so I know it opens up in February, but um, I got in early in January. And so um, I actually sort of kind of came up to Wolverhampton to spend, to spend the day with you. And in the last week, actually, uh, what's happened is that we've got two deals packaged up, one HMO in Wolverhampton and another HMO in uh, Stoke-on-Trent. 
and uh, those those have gone up on the app, um, and both of them have uh, sort of kind of sourcing fees of five thousand five thousand pounds, uh, all based on sort of kind of um, you know coming up to the office and sourcing those deals from right move and speaking to estate agents. Um, okay. Jay, yeah. You yeah. Tell us, when you come to the office, yeah. tell us about your day. Yeah, so uh, my day started off um, on right move researching properties. And while on the train up from London to Wolverhampton, I thought, okay, let me get some sort of criteria in mind. So I thought of HMOs, HMOs uh, with six bedrooms. And one of the key things that you taught me, Ash, was to sort of kind of get the rapport going. I know it was towards the start of the, of the new year. So, you know, I was saying, you know, happy new year. You know, how's it going in, in 2020? Getting a bit of rapport going and also explaining that, look, you know, this property there would be perfect for, um, for, my, for my group of investors and sort of saying, look, here's a big opportunity for this sort of property, which would be great for an investor. And there's, and we have a sort of, um, um, a collective of investors, so really creating that win-win there and making it clear that again, uh, with the deals, um, that they would actually get a buyer, you know, all the buyer's details, name, email address, so their processes wouldn't be messed with, in a sense, in terms of their sales pro processes. Okay, so Jay, now that you've known the process, etc., how has it opened your eyes out to other opportunities? 100%. Um, like um, I went up to Liverpool, uh, based on being in the office, I called up some um, estate agents in Liverpool. I went to Liverpool for three days on a scouting trip. And again, I think the key thing you said was not just phoning up, but actually meeting people as well, creating relationships, like meeting people. Um, so uh, from there, I've got sort of kind of um, off market opportunities as well. So I think rapport is a key thing because anyone can say, hey, my name is Tom Jones. Uh, I'm a property investor, but, you know, sort of having something more to you to actually allow you to stand out more and to become a human being rather than just, you know, someone looking for a quick buck in essence. OK, brilliant. Thank you very much, Jay. Uh, Cheers. If anyone, anyone's got any questions, Jay, are you sticking around for the session, yeah? Yeah, I'll, I'll stick around, Ash. Brilliant, thank you. Yes. So, just so you know, uh, one thing that Jay said, he said that he's, he went to Liverpool. Now, if I'm honest, I don't visit any of the properties that we put out on the app. Uh, I, I'm very much a distance sourcer. So, I can source property. I don't want to spend days up in Liverpool. I don't want to spend days up in Scotland, etc. because that's not, the, not, that's not the best use of my time. I can spend a day going to have a look at one property or could it spend a day talking about 10 properties. So I appreciate what Jay's doing. Jay's starting out on the blocks and he wants to, he wants to get involved uh, and he wants to learn a little bit more about it, which I completely get. But for me, I would literally say, but spend the time building a rapport with the agents on the phone and going and meeting them uh, instead of going and meeting them, etc. And believe it or not, you'll get to know a lot about them over the phone. So one of the uh, one of the benefits of joining the EPT, very simple, is that you get to become uh, you get to know my network of professionals. You get access to my team of solicitors, accountants, brokers, and tax advisors. You get uh, so just so you know, the EPT is uh, a mentorship where we do fifty. It's a fifty-two week program where we have a webinar, a live webinar, every Monday between seven pm to nine pm. Uh, and that's where we talk about all the different sourcing strategies. So that will be about how to find below market value deals, how to appraise the deals, how to package the deals, how to look for rent to rent opportunities, how to look for lease, op lease option opportunities, how to find development opportunities. There's so many opportunities out there that you should never be in a position where you can't not find a deal. We also have four live meetups a year. Um, also four live meetups a year where we have uh, it's always always held in Birmingham with keynote speakers and uh, different strategies so it could be service accommodation it could be creative financing again it could be developments it could be planning gains we've had Saj Hussain we've had Jim Halliburton we've had Justin Whittemore we've had some real interesting and knowledgeable people come and speak at these events 
Now, one of the key benefits about the Elite Property Tribe is a hand-holding service. It's a process of, okay, I'm always there with you. So come and spend the day in the office with me. Come and spend the day where we can talk. We can, so you can sit on the opposite side of the desk to me. And literally, I can hear all your conversations. I can listen to all your conversations, what you're saying to an agent, what you're not saying to an agent, how you're building rapport. And I'll literally click fingers and say, build more rapport. Don't go in for the kill yet. Don't go and start speaking to them about the property. Spend more time talking about them. And you'll become a more rounded property investor. Just so you know, the property investor app, uh, sorry, the elite property tribe is not a get rich, a get rich quick program. And I never intended it to be. It's about becoming a more rounded property investor, understanding property, understanding how to source, understanding the negotiation, giving you the knowledge and the skill base so that you don't make the mistakes that I already make and following a success, a proven success record by literally following everything that I've said to a T. So I'll always be by your side. So we have a call booking system where you can speak to me every day between 10 and 1. You book a call with me, I will know what we're speaking about, you'll email me what we're going to talk about so that I know well in advance so we can spend those 10 minutes wisely. You can book as many calls during the day as you wish. We have weekly live webinars every Monday between 7 and 9. You can also book to spend the day in the office with me, so that's a shadowing day. I'll also help with your negotiations and problem solving. So there was a scenario this week where one of the EPT members, he had a deal direct to the owner and he wanted me to be on the call so that I could understand so that if he was going through some difficulties, I would stand in and help with that. You'll have my personal mobile number. You'll also be invited into a private WhatsApp group, also a private Facebook group. We also have an EPT learning journal, which makes you log all the calls that you make and also all the actions that you do that week so that we can see where you are and what, you, what you're doing along your journey. And the, we've got uh, Elite Property Tribe platform, which is ElitePropertyTribe.co.uk. You can only become a member if you're part of the EPT. And it has all the recordings of the previous few years on there, plus all the documents, so all our rent-to-rent -rent calculators, all our contracts all of our spreadsheets, all of our documents, and everything that you need to make you a deal sourcing success. And then finally, we meet up four times a year with keynote speakers, but not to mention that obviously we have lots more contact with spending the day in the office with me. You can spend as many days. Jay came uh, two weeks ago. He's now coming again this week as well. So you can see that there's lots of opportunities for you to learn. So again, it's 52 weeks of online training, six cash flow strategies, deal trading. We'll also teach you how to look at rent to rent opportunities, lease option opportunities, HMO opportunities, service accommodation opportunities, and commercial to residential developments. Now these are all the things that I've done. I don't teach stuff that I haven't done. So this is completely, you know, coming from an experienced investor. So the cost of the EPT is, the full price of it is £6,000. However, you don't pay £6,000. You pay £3,000 initially. And then the remainder £3,000 balance is paid only once you have done deals. If you haven't done any deals for whatever reason, you just want to use it as an educational journey, that's completely up to you. And you won't end up paying the other £3,000. I'll make that extremely clear. You only pay the 3,000 if you do deals. So if you've done one deal and you've charged, let's say 3,000 pound fee, you'll just pay off the other 3,000 over a period of deals in chunks. You can pay the 3,000 in one lump sum, or you can pay it over a payment plan of three payments, and it's completely up to you. Um, okay, so there's a couple of questions coming in. I'll, I'll, answer, I'll answer them all shortly. So remember what I said, I'll always be by your side. You'll have the live webinars every Monday. You get to spend the day in the office with me whenever you wish. Help with negotiations. You have my personal mobile number, the WhatsApp group, the Facebook group, the learning journal, the platform, plus the quarterly meet. And also, here's something that we've been adding in, is that to get everyone off to kickstart, we're going to be doing a one-day intensive, which is on... The date is to be 100% confirmed, but we've penciled in Friday the 7th of Feb. 
And this is a day exclusive only to EPC members where we're going to be looking for deals, starting you, getting you to understand what does a deal look like. It will be a day where we start speaking to vendors and agents, getting you on the phone. I've called this a day getting you on the phone. I want you to understand, become comfortable with speaking to agents, speaking to vendors. So this is very hands-on. This is very hands-on approach. It's not not only are you learning the the um, the theory, but you're also learning the practical side to it as well. It's a day where we're appraising deals. It's a day where we're calculating the returns on investment and the yields. It's a day where we're looking at the hotspots. What areas are hotspots? How do we look for supply and demand? And we'll also be working in groups. So if you if you're not the if you're not the strongest person on the phone, we'll put we'll team you up with someone that may be slightly stronger on the phone. You do the research, they make the call, and it's the start of a fruitful relationship. But this is only available to EPT members. And again, we've penciled it in for the 7th of Feb in Birmingham. So just to give you an example, this week alone, there's a few more deals that we uploaded this week. These are the deals that we uploaded this week. All these have all gone as well. So Wolverhampton HMO, Hull through Terry's house. These are all on the property investor app, by the way. Two bed house in Hull, five bed HMO in Berkshire. That came to us direct with an agent. So the agent actually saw one of my YouTube videos and they reached out to me and said, oh, okay, I like, I understand the property investor wrap. I want to actually be able to start selling some of my stuff. I've got a five bed HMO in Berkshire. What do you think we can do with it? Will one of your investors buy it? Put it out there, sold it, investor went and viewed it yesterday. Looks like he's proceeding with that. Again, another 17% below market value deal in Burnley. Four bed HMO in Doncaster, that's another agent that approached us with that. Five year rent to rent agreement, that's with direct to vendor. This one is again with another agent as well. So we're, it's a real mix of agent and, uh, agent and uh, vendors. So that's eight that we've sourced, packaged and sold this week. So one thing I'm going to say to you is do something today that your future self will thank you for. Because, you know, with the start of 2020, this is your opportunity to do something where you're going to be able to make that better future, re relating back to your reason why, what you wanted to do, where you wanted to go, how you want to proceed. So think about 2020. Think about those goals that you set yourself and think about what you can do to achieve those goals. Now, we're going to spend a bit of time now just answering some questions. Quite a few questions just come through. So, and then uh, finally, we'll just go through uh, just some of the final slides, and then we'll close off for the evening. So, um, <clears throat> let's just have a quick look. So, uh, Eugene says, you mentioned about the marketing complications of the exclusivity. Can you shed more light on that, please? Okay, so Eugene, just so that you know, if an agent is, is selling the property and then you're trying to sell it and then the, the investor finds your deal online without your fee, let's just say for argument's sake, let's say that the property is £100,000 and it's fantastic value and you decide not to negotiate a discount on that. And then you sell it out to your investor database, to your investor database, at £100,000 plus a fee, and let's say £2,000. Now, the actual purchase price of that is now 100 plus 2, which means that the investor is paying 102000 However, if they see that opportunity now, and then they go direct to Ryan Beam and find it, and they call the agent direct, they could have saved themselves £2,000, but in the, in the meanwhile, then cutting you out of the equation. So what you've done is, in actual fact, cut you out of the equation. Does that make sense? Right, okay, so let's, uh, okay, so Eugene says, yeah, okay. So, <clears throat> Haroon from Warsaw here, is it £6,000 just for your online course? Can I learn from you in person as well? Well, like I said, Haroon, 
just so you know, so the £6,000 is for the call, so you can come and spend as much time in the office with me as you want. So, you know, you said that you're in Warsaw, I'm based in Wolverhampton, we're a million miles, um, so we're, we're not a million miles apart. So does that make sense? Um, as well as that, we've got the four live meetups, we've got the webinars every Monday, uh, you come and spend the time in the office, and we've got the, uh, we've got the call links as well, so you can call me as many times as you want. Actually, good question from Akshay, because what are your three tips to build rapport with estate agents and why? Okay. <clears throat> first tip, spend the first five minutes dealing, when you're dealing with estate agents, spend the first five minutes just talking about anything else but property. Now, this might seem a little bit unnatural to you guys at first, but when you speak to an estate agent, you know, they like to work with people who are real people. And the reason why I say that is because when I speak to an agent, say, okay, guys, how are you guys getting on? How are you finding the market? How are you finding Brexit? You know, uh, and I spend a couple of minutes just talking about that. What do you reckon to, you know, what do you reckon to, or what's going to happen in the fi financial markets? What do you reckon the vendors are going to do? And spend a bit of time just understanding, because what you're doing is you're building your authority with the agent. Um, a second tip, don't go in straight away and get to the business point. Understand the property. So why has the property been on the market? No, how long has the property been on the market? How many viewings have you had? You know, what's been the general feedback from the people that you've shown around? What, one of the questions I always ask is, just out of curiosity, why hasn't it sold yet? It sounds like a fantastic property, why hasn't it sold? And this is where the agent will open up to you and say, well, uh, we think it may be a little bit overpriced or the vendor hasn't been very forthcoming. Um, we're very forthcoming with information and they could tell you all kinds of bits about the property and the area and the vendor. So just take your time, don't rush when you're speaking to agents. And more importantly, third tip, use the time on the phone. And you spend the more time you spend on the, on the phone with the agents, the more com comfortable and confident you become. People like doing business with people who are confident. So when I pick up the phone to an agent, and I say, hi, yeah, my name's Arsh. Um, you know, I own a company called the Property Investor app. By the way, if you've got a mobile phone, feel free to download it whilst we're on the phone. We have a quick chat, and I'm spending time with them on the phone, and I'm trying to make sure that I'm sounding confident and with them every step of the way. Uh, so what we're doing is that I make sure that I cement my place in their mind as the authority in the area. So, so just so you know, guys, I've also already got some HMOs in the area. Uh, I also I've sold some properties in the, this location. Uh, I work with this agent. I work with that agent. I work with this auction house. I work with that letting agent. And what I'm doing is literally constantly telling them that I'm the best person for them to be working with. Does that make sense? So. Uh, Mr. Bashir says, how do you negotiate a purchase price with the estate agents? Is it the asking price or range? All depends, Mr. Bashir, all depends on the property and the location and what's being offered. You know, just to give you an example, two of the properties that I showed on the previous slide there, we didn't actually negotiate the purchase price because we felt like they were already really good deals. But then there are other deals where we negotiated the purchase price because we felt like it was a little bit rich or a little bit too much for the area. So it all comes down to the property and what you're offering. So uh, Karen says, you said the estate agent will charge the buyer and you also pay them a fee. This is illegal, is it not? They could not charge two fees. Now, well, if you're paying them a fee, they're not charging you a fee, you're paying them a fee. That's the difference. Does that make sense? What's the difference to the estate agent not only charging the vendor a uh, the vendor a fee for selling their property but then also receiving a box of chocolates and a bottle of wine it's not illegal because they're still acting in the best interest of the vendor they're still acting in the best interest of the vendor 
and it's like pretty much it's, let, let's let's treat this as letting agents letting agents they make their money off the vendor would you agree 10 percent plus back for letting their property now do they not charge a fee to or did they previously not charge a fee to the tenant for letting the property to them the admin fee the uh the credit check fee the referencing fee They've made the money off the vendor and now they're making the money off the tenant so what's the difference so again don't or don't over complicate uh so don't over complicate things when you're looking at this so me and my partner are considering to pay for this program can we pay three thousand through our company there's a certain amount of time period to pay the remaining three thousand just so you know the the uh program is a year so you've got 52 weeks, starting from the first Monday in February 2020. There's no time, pay, time frame period to pay the 3,000, so you don't have to do it within the year. If you don't do it within the first year, don't panic. Remember, and just so that you know, I'm one of the only people that said, don't panic about the other three grand. The other three grand for me is not really that important. For me, it's about getting you guys to a level and getting you doing deals. That's where I really succeed. I want to see you guys do deals. That's my main motivation behind it. Okay, so Charlie said, when looking for purchase lease options, how do you approach your estate agent? Charlie, okay. So Charlie, you've really got to work, when you're, you're pitching, remember purchase lease options, they're not a natural method of sale for the estate agent. So you've really got to pitch it You've really got to pitch it to the estate agent so that they understand how is the vendor going to win, how is the agent going to win, and what is it that you're going to bring to the table. Now, you've got to make sure. I've done, this, uh, I've done purchase lease options with estate agents. I've done purchase lease options with auction houses, and I've also done them with letting agents. You're better off doing a purchase lease option with a letting agent than you are an estate agent. So if you say that I'm going to rent the property off a letting agent, and also within that time period, I may even actually sell it. I might even actually buy it as well. So I think you may be approaching the wrong agents for that, personally. Uh, okay, so Richard says, when do you uh, avoid charging VAT on your fees? So you only, pay, uh, you only start charging VAT on your fees when you hurt, hit a certain threshold. Uh, we'll start charging VAT on our fees uh, this year. Um, okay. Let's quickly go. Let's quickly go through. Uh, okay. So uh, you've said sounds great. What about monthly instalments? So the monthly instalments is three instalments. So you pay the first month, and then thirty days after you pay the second instalment, thirty days after you pay the third instalment. So there are three installments, okay. Uh, question, what are the good tips to find builders? Okay, that's a really, really random question uh, because finding builders is a law unto themselves. Uh, finding a law of, how do you find a good builder? Personally for me, it would have to go off recommendation because Every, if you go on any website, a builder says that they're fantastic. No builder's going to say, you know what, I'm a cowboy, I'm going to run off with your money. So you've got to work off recommendations, someone that you know has done work, uh, someone that you know has done work, and you've gone and inspected their work. That's what I would personally recommend. I wouldn't go to a website and try and find a builder uh, and try and figure out what his work's like thereafter, because... The work may be good, but is their commitment any good? I've come across builders who've got phenomenal work, but trying to get them to the job is impossible because they've got so much on. So you've got to take the, uh, you've got to take deals, and you've got to look at it straight away. Uh, you've got to look at the all angles when you're dealing with builders. Unfortunately, that's as vague as I can be when it comes to finding builders. You can see a deal on Rightmove that will work for a deal, a deal to source. How do you buy this property to source? You, okay, first thing, you should buy the property. You're not intending on buying the property. That's your first mistake. 
You've got your, if you go to the uh, estate agent and tell them that you're the buyer, straight away you're lying to them, straight away they've lost trust in you because they're assuming that you're the buyer. Remember what I said about you're not the buyer, you're the sourcer. So therefore they ask for proof of funds or mortgage in principle. You're telling them you're the buyer. Straight away they're going to expect you to provide that proof of funds and you haven't been transparent with them from day one. Wrong way to approach it, unfortunately, David. Okay, so what made me get into real estate? Do, do you have any mentors? Believe it or not, I've got a mentor that he's actually worth a couple of billion pounds. And he really pushes me into uh, different levels of thinking. So yes, I've got mentors and uh, I've got mentors and they really push me and they make me put, go into different directions, which is phenomenal for me. Now, Mitesh says, on average, if I make 10 calls a day, how many trades a week could I make? Now, Mitesh, you may make 10 calls a day. How good are those 10 calls? Now, I know that if I made 10 calls a day, eight of those would be deals. That's just purely because of me and the fact that I've been doing this a while and I understand the product that I offer, I understand the place that I sit in the marketplace, I understand how I can create real win-win scenarios, and that's where you want to be. So if you make 10 calls a day, I don't want you, you know, you could make 30 calls a day, but all of them could be useless. So if you make 10 good calls a day, you know, even if you made five, even if you got out of that, even if you did two deals a day, Two deals a day is 10 deals a week, which is 10 deals a week, which is uh, 10 times 50 is 500 deals a year. It's very ambitious in year one if you're starting out. Does that make sense? So don't put too much emphasis. I want you to dedicate time to it, but I also want to make sure that you, you're going to be able to work on it. So David says, do you offer any other courses or mentorship? So with the deal sourcing and deal trading, this is the only workshop that we offer. I do offer one day workshops, etc. But I find that with deal sourcing, because there are so many different angles to it. Are you sourcing rent to rent? Are you sourcing lease options, <clears throat> etc.? You need pretty much hands on approach to it uh, to make that to make that work. So, you know, that's why we've that's why we've. Uh, created the Elite Property Tribe. Now to join, all you got to do is go to bit.ly forward slash EPT2020. If you want to find out a little bit more about the Elite Property Tribe, go to bit.ly forward slash EPT info. So guys, I think I've pretty much answered all the questions. Pretty much on time as well. So just check in the website. Some of the links are broken. One of the deals talks about a rent-free period until August 2018. Okay, that might be interesting. Ivan, if you want to send me uh, an email about that, I'll, I'll have a look at that. That sh That's not correct. That shouldn't be correct. So, guys, on that note, I wish you all a great evening. Hopefully, you've enjoyed. Uh, hopefully, you've enjoyed the session. Hopefully, you've uh, taken lots of notes. Hopefully, you've taken away a fair amount of information. And on that note, guys, if you've got any questions, feel free to email them across. Um, okay, so sorry, last question. So San says, I'm in London and Washington, D.C. Can I work your program in the U.S.? Absolutely, San. Just so you know, I've got people that are actually in Saudi Arabia. I've got a lady in Australia. I've got a lady in Kenya. I've actually got a lady in China. That's all sourcing as well. And these are guys actually doing deals. Yeah, you could use the angle that you're an invest, a an international property investor. Uh, and when when you talk about international property investor, uh, is it an issue that I won't have a real estate license? You don't need a real estate license. It's not a regulated industry. Deal sourcing, deal sourcing is. Um, Deal sourcing is not a regulated industry, so you don't need to worry about that. Now, uh, another question comes in goes, I work nine to five jobs on the weekdays. Will this cause any problems for this program? Absolutely not. So does most of the people in the EPT. They work it around their nine to five. They do some bits in the evening. They possibly inquire on the, about some properties during their lunchtime. They work on it on the weekends. It all depends on how much time. All you've got to do is follow the system. 
and the processes have put in place. Don't deviate away from those. The guys that deviate are the ones that won't do deals. The guys that really succeed, the guys that just follow what I say to a T. So guys, on that note, I wish you a great evening. Um, okay, so one last question. Oh, okay, Danny, I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to answer this one now because I could talk about this one more for ages. So one last question, please, Ash. She goes, how do you possibly avoid any bad tenants or voids? Now, <clears throat> this may sound a bit random. May sound a bit random, but the way that I treat this is pretty much like, an, uh, I'm not sure if this is the right analogy, but it's like a nightclub. For your night to run successfully, you need to be able to have the right people in the right place. So with the HMO, uh, with a tenant, with a tenant, you can do lots of checks on them without having to take them through a credit reference check. You can look at their bank statement. You can have a look at what their what their lifestyles looking like just off their bank statement. If they got paid on the first of the month, has all their money gone by the second of the month, or is it uh, is it spread over equally throughout the month? You can also ask for references from previous levels. If they're on benefits, you can ask some questions from the benefits section. There's so many ways. I'll tell you what, Danny, if you if you want to have a chat about that, feel free to give me a quick call on this uh, tomorrow, and I, I can give you some hints and tips on that, if that's okay, Danny, because I could ask so many, I could ask, uh, I could answer so many questions. Uh, I could go off on a complete tangent on that. So my office number there is there, 01902 Feel free to give me a quick call. So I said, if the property is, not, is in the USA and the list of investors in the UK, isn't that an issue or do you have a way to find investors? Now, what I could probably do, Sand, is teach you how to find investors in the US. Now, I've never sold a property in the US before, I'll be completely honest. Not to say that we won't in the future, but all the property that I'm sourcing at the moment is in the UK. Now, if you find a property in the UK, we're very good at selling those within the UK. So guys, on that note, I wish you all a great evening ahead. Enjoy the rest of the weekend and I'll speak to you all very soon. Take care, good night, God bless.